Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Sometimes we get it wrong. We made 75 bulletins thinking there'd be enough. We had to make more. Thank you very much. Uh, it's the choir's fault. Thank you, choir, for being here and kicking us over. And if you want to leave your bulletin for those people at 1045, that would be fantastic. There's so much that I want to say to you this morning, just before service, uh, one of our members came up and told me about Mike Hansen, the man who was there having the funeral for his mother and his wife expired during the service. And uh, this man said to me, I've known these people for 30 years, but they don't know, didn't have a church home, they didn't know Jesus, and it's my fault. It's our fault because people are dying and they don't know who Jesus is. Death overcomes them and they don't see Jesus. We have been blessed to have the transfiguration panels out there. Mark Balma has given us a gift. And if you take a look as you leave today, I want you to recognize these first outdoor frescoes in over 700 years. Some person said, well, they look a little shabby. Well, we don't know what Minnesota can do to a fresco. It's going to be uh, something that we just take a look at. But I want you to see the men hovering in front. Peter, James, and John. This is the trifecta. These were the gang, so to speak. Jesus was tired of people. Can you imagine that? He wanted to be by himself, alone, apart. He took the three boys and went up on the hill. And then this thing happened. Have you ever seen them pour steel? When they pour steel, that light, that bright light is just like a fuller's fire. It is just so... Sometimes you have to shade your eyes when you're welding. That's that brightness. Jesus was transfigured before them. He is about to die on the cross for us, and God is giving him a, close, a dose of this glory. And the disciples look around. Why, Moses and Elijah? How did Moses die? We don't know. He went up on the mountain, and God covered him and took care of him. He buried him. How did Elijah die? Swing low, sweet chariot. <laughs> he was taken up into the heavens. We don't know. These are the two men, two of the greatest prophets, and they're there with a message for Jesus. What did they say? Oh, I wish, I wish they would have told us what they said. Something like, think the Vikings are actually going to win the Super Bowl? <laughs> no, I don't think that was it. But they were, were, they were there to minister to Jesus. Have you ever seen something so fantastic that you just couldn't wait to tell others? There was a priest up in northern Minnesota. He's getting to be the end of his life. And he, uh, he played hooky a lot. He liked to golf. He lived near Giant's Ridge. And they gave free golfing to clergy. So instead of going to his regular meeting with the other people at the ministerium, he would take off. The church council was very upset with him and said, no, you can't do this. You need to be out there with the people. Well, sure enough, he, uh, the angels are talking about this with St. Peter. They said, what are we going to do with this guy? And all of a sudden, he sneaks off to go golfing again. He said, let He's told him that he's not going to golf for, for three months. Kind of a rehab program. <coughs> so all of a sudden, St. Peter says, I'll fix it. <coughs> he tees off on the fifth, going over, looking over to the lake. And as he tees off, it's shanks and it goes into the weeds. But a gopher grabs it and starts carrying it to his hole. And as he is carrying it, these the priest is watching this. An eagle comes down and swoops down and grabs the gopher and starts carrying the gopher away. And all of a sudden, the gopher drops the ball. It hits on the fairway and goes right into the hole. <laughs> and the two angels are with St. Peter and said, 
That's punishing him? You're punishing this man for not doing the work by, by giving him a hole in one? How can that be punishing him? St. Peter said, who is he going to tell? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is transfigured before his three favorite disciples and Mark. I, I love Mark. You see, Matthew was the Jew. <clears throat> Peter was the doctor, precise. John, I'm sorry, Luke was the doctor and John <laughs> was just weird. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Phew. That's creation in one verse. But here, Mark wants to get it down. He's not always correct in his syntax. He doesn't, he don't speak real good at times. But the reality is he wants to get it down and he writes it quickly because he wants us to know. Many times in the Gospel of Mark it says, shh. He healed Jairus' daughter, don't tell anyone. Go show yourselves, but don't tell anyone. Why? Because this riddle will be solved when Jesus rises from the dead. I don't know about you, but I had a transistor radio when I was younger. It wasn't just one transistor. It was eight. I was 12 years old, and I had this radio. And I lived in South Minneapolis, and it worked good outside, but inside, pooey! I couldn't believe it. Lead pipes, this, that, other things, I couldn't get it. But I slept on a bed, all metal, and we called it the critter. Why? Because when you rolled over, it made weird noises, like you were in the boundary waters. I found that if I took some alligator clips with a piece of wire and attached them to the antenna and put it and tied it and hooked it to my critter, this metal bed, I could hear the twins even after I was supposed to be in bed. When they were playing on the West Coast, and I remember one day, all of a sudden, I heard, and Tony Carew, he's gonna steal home! He's gonna steal home! And he slides in and, and the twins win! Yeah, but I couldn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be sleeping, and all of a sudden, he stole home for the seventh time. He tied a world's record. So in the morning, I got up quickly. I went out to the street, got the paper, brought it in, said, Oh, look at here! Oh, that was just oh, perfect. <laughs> but I couldn't wait. There are a lot of people like Mike Hansen that don't know Jesus. And no matter what we do, they may still not know Jesus. But you know what? We are the ones, we 30% of the world who call ourselves Christians. I told you once that 50% of the people were Christians when I started to be a minister. And then it went down and down and now it's 30. And by the time 2020 hits and the world expansion, we should be 25% at best. What difference does it make? Peter says what we say. Oh, oh, let's build Disneyland. And Jesus said, nope, measles. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> he wants to build three sheds and make a, a memorial there so everybody can come. Nope. The people aren't there. The people are in Stacy. The people are in Chisago County. The people are in the Twin Cities area, and the people are right here. And they need to know that this man, who was transfigured before a few, will be the savior of the world. And that's why I preach, and that's why we teach, and that's why we proclaim the good news of Jesus. I know in my heart of hearts that I'm terminal. Brian, Hoppy, they started him nine times, you said? Nine times they put the defib machine on him to get him out of defib, or, you know. And now he's wearing a vest to keep him from going into defib. Something has to happen. But yet, 
I'm thankful that that vest was invented and that whenever he decides to go rogue, it will spring him back and they can figure it out. God has, we, I've seen miracles. One thing that I saw this week and I cried at the Stepping Stone Theater for Black History Month, it was called The Four Little Girls of Birmingham. There was such hate and violence on Dynamite Hill down in the city in Birmingham, they would throw bombs randomly, try to scare these black people who were moving into the white neighborhood. And sure enough, these church got bombed. And these four little girls, one wanted to be a vet, one wanted to be a doctor, one wanted to be a nurse, and one wanted to be anything that she could. But this play spoke to me that violence and hatred and terrorism has no part of our lives because Jesus changes things. God wants us to listen. God wants us to reach out. God wants us to proclaim the good news so that whether that person is in your family, whether that person is in your neighborhood, or it's just a customer at your store, a word. Jesus told his disciples to keep quiet until he had risen from the dead. That must have been hard. I know that when I go into a store, I survey the situation, I check people out, and I'm praying, God, if there's any way possible I can say something that will make a difference in this person's life, give it to me. <clears throat> I want you to know that you are his disciple, and that he wants you to make a difference right where you are, and his Holy Spirit can do the job if we give him a chance. A cloud enveloped them, covered over them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they were no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. Isn't that the best news? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, help us to see nothing but Jesus. Help us to remember that we too, even at a funeral, can have a heart attack and die. But God, we know that our lives are in your hands because you loved us so much. You sent your son Jesus to die on the cross so that we might live forever. Give us good courage, give us faith, and help us to make a difference. Send your Holy Spirit, keep your promise, fill us now.